In part three, we discussed how risky solar flare levels and their associated CMEs would be for a magnetic field collapse scenario at Earth. Whether that causes an L-shell discharge similar to a magnetar, the loss of the global grid, or the final blow to Earth's ongoing magnetic reversal, which we discussed in parts 1 and 2. We looked at how Earth being down about 20% or so in the field today increases those risks, and how that might scale across different field loss scenarios. Now, these applications are easier to consider when contextualized in this way, but there is also the consecutive impact scenario with multiple solar storms and feet to the fire. This is probably the reason I would lean closer towards the 25% chance of a superstorm effect at Earth this coming cycle rather than the 20% lower end of the range we gave in part three. In this scenario, we are looking at multiple smaller blasts in succession, at least we hope so. If they're multiple larger blasts, things get scary pretty quickly. Now to consider this, we don't shift the curves, we consider a lower field strength range based on the geomagnetic storm. The practical reality of CME impact and geomagnetic storm is a destabilized and generally weaker field. So let's say we took an X3 or 4 solar flare and CME impact, potentially causing a KP6 or 7, level 2 or 3 geomagnetic storm. The second box is the likely range for the strength of Earth's field to consider during that scenario. Now let's say we took two hits from that powerful of a flare, or perhaps one hit from say an X10, maybe with a KP8 or level 4 geomagnetic storm. Perhaps then we would have to consider the field to be down closer to 50% or the third box. Now, to give you a better idea of how this works, let's consider two examples represented by the black and white stars here. Now for the black stars, the top one on the left would be the risk we are in now. But if we got hit by two of them, as we said, we jump down to the bottom box and yet there's another one on the way, which posed very little risk with a full field and even a negligible risk at our current 20% down field strength. Another such event, however, we start to move down the curve and present a higher risk of collapse. Now with the white stars, we're looking at bigger flare scenarios, perhaps one titanic sunspot firing two X-15 flares back to back. Now we can draw vertical lines to improve our estimations of the risk enhancement, and with the third low X-class impact, we could have more than a 10 to 15% chance of major effects, even though one of them would barely be any risk at all. The first X-15 event right now may only provide a 1 in 4 chance of that collapse, but that more than doubles to a better than 50-50 chance when the second one arrives. Now, if an X-15 is unusual, two in a row is very rare. And in truth, this is where things start to get too complex for a simple chart. We could have coronal hole streams, filament eruptions, and solar flares, and it's not likely that numerous consecutive solar flares are going to be exactly the same strength. And so it's really not so nice and clean. But if this chart can be helpful to us in single events as we go through the upcoming sunspot cycle, perhaps just one more can help us gauge all of these messy factors put together. How about a conversion chart? KP index to field loss percentage. There would be virtually no effect before KP4, which is where instability in the field begins. And as geomagnetic storms scale up, this can be a great approximation of where on this chart we would find another impact's risk of that collapse. Now it's important to know that this applies for when the impact occurs at Earth, not when the eruption leaves the sun. So let's say there is a KP8, a level 4 geomagnetic storm ongoing, and you know that the CME from an X1 blast is about to impact. That is much, much scarier than the X5 that may have just happened on the sun and whose CME won't arrive for a day or two later, at which point the peak of the storm would likely be over. And that's another point. This enhanced risk only lasts as long as the geomagnetic storm. The other effects of the space weather do continue for other parts of the Earth system, including the weather and induction in the crust and mantle. But for the major field event risk we're talking about here, it's only while the geomagnetic storm is ongoing in the magnetic field of Earth. 
We should probably use both of these charts throughout the upcoming sunspot cycle and hopefully be able to adapt them when we get new information about the field. Super flares might be rare, but with a weaker magnetic field at Earth, we don't need one. And the space weather it will take to cause the worst of the effects, in truth, is just not terribly uncommon during sunspot maxima, at least now that our magnetic field is at this state. All images in this video are free to use, by the way, in blogs or articles or other videos. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.